In this episode, we're gonna talk about fiberglass cloth, which one's the best to use, and why. I'm Brian. Join the adventures as I share what I learned restoring a hurricane-damaged catamaran with the dream to sail the world. So this is the next section I'm gonna attack here. I'm gonna cut this whole piece off now that I know that it's aligned how I want it. I'm gonna cut that whole piece off probably back to over here where it's good. I'm gonna uh, Then I'm gonna grind all the gel coat off and a couple layers down so that I can tie it all back together um, with the new core in there. And then I already started cutting this away um, back to the good glass. So this will have to still get feathered back. Um, and then of course the new core put in and feathered back on this side. So time to get started and let's see how much fun we can have grinding. Well, in Florida, it's just way too hot during the day. So uh, I've been working at night. At least I'm giving it a try. Been uh, grinding this down. That is the beauty of working where I'm at. I can make as much noise as I want. It's late into the night. It's almost midnight, pulling an all-nighter. I still got a few more things to do uh, to get the deck sealed up. This here was just a little crack, but I had to open it up in order to make sure I got all the delamination off. It's 1.30 in the morning and I am just finishing up. I got some glass laid, the foam bedded on this crack here. Just gotta clean up and hopefully I can get out of here by two. Today, I'm a little bit better equipped for the heat and the rain, right? Check out my shade. This is what I did yesterday. Got this core replaced here. Got this long level. And I'm not using the level to level, although it is sort of helpful to make sure that it's slightly out of level, pointing down, uh, downwind, <laughs> down slope so that the water runs off. But what I'm doing is I'm checking the one side for fairness and then come back here and make sure this side is going to be fair so that I don't have any high spots or have any low spots that I'm going to have to, um, to get to get too crazy with down like this. I'm just making sure that I have this thing perfect, perfect as far as into place. And the key is to make sure it's a little low. Uh, low spots, right, you can fair them out. I mean, I don't want it more than, you know, an eighth of an inch low. But low spots are fine because you, you when I build up the glass, that'll, um, I gotta account for that. But you don't want any high spots. And this, uh, this core, because I built the core up out of two pieces, um, this core is an eighth of an inch too thick. And I knew that, so I'm just gonna come and grind this core down, get it level, and we're gonna make it work. It's arts and crafts time. Gotta spread the clay out so that I get a, a level mold for putting on the next layer of glass so that it's even with the core. Here it is with the peel ply on it. Uh, the clay with the peel ply. Not exactly a work of art, but it should do what I need. Uh, so let's get the first layer of glass on here and then get the core in. I'm just waiting for this to set up here. Sand it back. <coughs> Sand it back and put some glass on it. Here I am cleaning up after another night of working. I'm calling it quits a little early. I have no idea what time it is. It's probably only 10 or 11 or something. Super pleased with the work that I've got done so far. I've got the peel ply on, but my uh, fabric was pretty dry. It didn't even suck up much as excess resin. So I probably didn't even need to peel ply it, but I got lots of peel ply. Um, so with this, um, the first layer on the cracks, uh, this section here done, and the post done. I mean, when I say done, I mean the first layer on. The shape is there. I still, once I have it all done, I need to go back through, fair it all, and put the put the uh, additional la strength layers on it to um, 
to make it perfect. But for right now, this is going to be good enough because it's going to allow me to seal up the boat. I think I'm taking the day off today. Just cleaned up a little bit. Try to get this so this will be stay kind of dry inside now. Coming up next in the same episode is the tech talk about fiberglass cloth. But before that, let's take a look at a couple before and after shots of this section that I did. Also, be sure to check out the disclaimer at the end of the tech talk that will explain a little bit of how I'm doing the video and what to expect in the future. In this episode, we're gonna talk about fiberglass cloth, which one's the best to use and why. The best practices if you're repairing a boat is to find out what the, the lamination schedule is or the specific cloths that they use and how many layers they used uh, when the boat was built and then you wanna duplicate that. I have sacrificed some of my resin stir sticks to build this model for an example to show you. So, so there's three different types of cloth or weaves of cloth we're gonna talk about. Uh, first uh, is woven, which is probably the, the earliest and the most common. It's woven like a piece of cloth. So here's a couple samples that I have of some, from my stockpile of different uh, woven cloth that I have. This first one, uh, this is about, I think maybe one ounce or three quarter ounce and a half something like that this is a very lightweight cloth um, see it's a very fine cloth uh, this is good for maybe models and things like that uh, the next one up you move into about a four ounce cloth um, this is I think three or four ounce cloth this would be good for like a, a surfboard or something like that and so the weight is the the number of ounces per square yard of the fabric and so that this would be four ounces for for a square yard of fabric and then we move up to uh, this cloth. I think this is about seven or eight ounces. Uh, so usually about six and up. That's that's typically used in uh, for boat building. And so they'll use a, a cloth like this that's woven. And then finally, this guy here, woven roving. This guy has huge strands. Uh, and so uh, this is a very heavy duty item. I can't remember. What the um, what the weight on this is, but woven, woven, very heavy. This next model is the model I would use to to model chop strand matting. Basically, they're just fiberglass strands in random directions that they've just thrown out, and typically they're glued together, and so you can only use them with a polyester or a vinyl ester resin. And we're going to talk about resins in the next episode. Um, but when they have a knit fabric, which we're going to talk about next, you can use them. You can see here right on the surface. It runs on all different directions. Uh, this is chop strand mat, uh, and and this is actually sewn in to the to the fabric. Um, we're going to cover the next type, which is knit. And so what what mat is good for is mat is good for helping to bind multiple layers together because it kind of becomes fuzzy and those those bind in and kind of uh, tie it to other layers. They're also good to prevent print through because this this stuff here, it'll if you go with a really low resin content which you want this will become quite textured you'll actually see these texture weaves on it uh, and so uh, this is what the mat is good for is if you want to have a finished surface this is my model that represents knit so it has all of the strands going straight not weaving through each other in the same direction now this one i cheated and i glued them together but typically they're sewn together with little threads that, that knit them together, I guess. I don't know, I don't know how to knit, but. Uh, so this is uh, what's typically called the, the knit fabric. And this would be considered a biaxle because it runs in this direction and it runs in this direction. So you can get unidirectional, which would just have these guys here, basically a flat plank uh, of strands running one direction, biaxle, triaxle. So we'll look at some of the different types of that. This here is a very lightweight, probably I think three or four ounce, uh, biaxle cloth and so it has the, the and this is great because you can really see what it has so it has strands running 45 degrees to each other so it's biaxle 45 on 45 uh, and then it has this thin lines sewing it uh, together to hold it together and so this is a really lightweight this this you really wouldn't use on a boat or anything more for surfboards or models or I might use some of this in the interior of my boat because um, I like it uh, then we move up to this is 1708 and you can get it in different uh, 
a very common cloth, probably one of the most common cloths is 1708. And you can get this in different weights. Uh, there's, there's 1208. And the 17 means the ounces per square yard for the biaxial part. And so this guy here, so if you, if you notice, we can see strands coming off of this going at a 45. And then underneath those strands, if I unbury these, I've got strands going the other direction at 45 that are not woven. So very much like the, um, the little model that I've shown. And you can get, this is 45 by 45. You can get it uh, zero by 90. And they'll really, the only difference is depending on how you're gonna lay the roll out to which direction you want the strength. Because just like when you have these, you're gonna have lots of strength going this way. So if you have a unidirectional cloth, lots of strength going this way where the strands are running the same way, but this other direction, right? There's no strength, right? I can, and, and so that's where we have a biaxle where they're running 45 to 45 so that it provides that cross strength. What my boat specifies uh, that they used in, in most of the boat is triaxle. And so triaxle, this is where you'll see the unidirectional, right? So this has like 13 ounce, this is 2200, I think this has, 13 ounce uh, unidirectional running this way. Then underneath this, if we were to unbury some of this, if I can get it underneath there, you'll see basically it's the same thing. I've got 45 by 45, it's hard to see under there. I've got 45 by 45 running the opposite direction. And then the last part of that, which is the 08, this is, this is 2208, has that chop strand mat on the back and normally chop strand mat if you buy it alone it's glued together and so you can only use it with polyester and vinyl ester resin but if it's knit cloth like this then you can typically use it with epoxy and the reason for that is the glue only breaks down with the styrene in the vinyl ester or the uh, polyester resin and we're going to talk about resins next episode so which one is better well both knit and woven serve different purposes uh, the key to making a strong laminate is to have the least amount of resin that you can have and the maximum of, of glass, and that's your glass to resin ratio. You want it very high glass. You want a lot more glass than you want re resin. Typically, a good ratio is 50%. If you can get 50% hand layup, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, you can get down with vacuum bagging. You can get down below that, you know, in the 40s and, and, and whatnot. Uh, but it is going to depend on the cloth that you're using too. Uh, so, so that makes it strong. However, that only goes to a certain point because if you get it not enough resin that it doesn't fully wet out the fabric, it'll go backwards and it'll become weaker because the fabric never got, um, never never get stiff from not having the resin on it. And so you want the, the fabric completely wet out, but as least amount of resin that you can have with the, with the glass completely wet out. And so one of the things that you'll notice on this is you'll see the thickness. Now, when we talked about foam core, we talked about how the thicker something is, the more stiff it is. So you would think, well, this would be th thicker, but it, it has a couple problems. Number one, uh, it's it's the resin right so this is going to be thicker this these have the same amount of sticks in them the same thickness of sticks and so this is going to have a lot more resin in it and so this will be resin heavy so this won't be as strong because of the more resin in it for the weight of of the knit fabrics so first of all the knit fabrics have an advantage there uh but but then you think well it's a little bit thicker so that it'll be stiffer well you would think that and that does play a little bit into it but the the real strength comes from the fibers not from the resin and, and so it's, in the end, probably the ultimate load strength would probably be the same. But this is not as stiff because you see in this very exaggerated model how these, the fibers are bowed. And so as we do this, right, we're straightening fibers up and, um, and, and pulling them. So before they can go into tension or even in, in compression, uh, they, they, they stretch and flex. And so this makes this not nearly as stiff as having the straight uh, fibers. And so having a knit cloth is a much stiffer cloth, even though it's narrower. And so that's where knit cloths work so well with a core because you put knit on one side, core in the middle, knit on the other side, and you have the thickness, but then you have the really high strength to weight ratio of the, of the knit fabric. So why in the world would you ever want to use woven over knit fabrics? 
Well, there's a couple reasons. The number one, cost. <laughs> Generally, the, the woven fabrics are a lot cheaper. And then the other thing, and, and we're going to talk a lot more about this when we get into talking about resins and the different strengths of resins and, the, and how the, the, the flex of the resin makes a huge difference in, in what, it, what happens with it. So when you're using some of these, yeah, they might work better with some of the polyesters and vinyl esters, uh, but epoxy is where these things really shine. You want the most efficient uh, laminate, it's gonna be this. But if you're using polyester, you're not gonna see as much advantage anyway, so you might as well go with the, the cheaper cloth. Uh, and if you're trying to just just build up the laminate quickly. You can do with you can deal with the cloth because you're getting this. You're not get. You don't need the stiffness for the weight. And so it depends on how efficient of a laminate you're trying to make. One of the things that I didn't talk about is the different types of material used in making the, the fabric. We're just covering fiberglass, which really is glass fibers. Uh, fiberglass is the trademark name, but it's really what's known as e-glass, which is electrical grade glass, which is sort of the, the low grade fiberglass. And that's the, the reason that most people use that is because the, the glass fibers are not the weak point in the structure. It's generally the resin that they're using, especially if you're using polyester. Here again, tune in next episode, you're, we're gonna talk about that. But so, so that's, that's really why that we'll use e-glass. And then there's S-glass. And believe it or not, S-glass is actually stronger than carbon fiber. Now, before you get all bent out of shape, because that statement's not exactly true, it can be because there's different grades of carbon fiber and, and such, but carbon fiber has a lot lower density. And so carbon fiber is a lot stronger for its weight, but not necessarily for its, its thickness, right? And, and so S-glass uh, has some advantages over carbon fiber. We're also gonna talk about the different properties of carbon fiber and, uh, and glass and why there's a problem if you start mixing them and how you have to engineer around those. Uh, and, and so, but we, first we need to talk about resin because that all plays in this. The whole key of a good composite structure is to have the whole thing engineered so that each material, you're using the best properties of each and putting it together to an engineered composite. As I started to put together this episode, I was thinking about all those great comments I had about people saying how much I know about fiberglass and what an expert I am, et cetera, et cetera. And, and the truth is, I'm not. I really have no idea what I'm doing. In fact, there's a reason why the initials to Brian Sailing are BS. So I have learned a few things. Uh, I'm, not an, I'm not an engineer, but I have studied a bunch of engineering. Uh, one of my favorites is this book. Uh, it came off of Elon Musk's uh, reading list. I would highly recommend checking it out. Um, and I've, I've studied over the last probably four or five years as I was preparing to design and build my own sailing catamaran. And I put together CAD, I, I drew up a bunch of stuff and I spent a lot of time studying different plans and looking at that. And in the end, one of the things that I lacked, even though I had a lot of technical knowledge that I'd gained through books of reading books on yacht design and things like that, what I really lacked was hands-on fiberglass work. And so as I started to design stuff, it was hard for me to really get a good grasp on what I needed to do. And so when this project came up to, to repair this hurricane damaged boat, I thought, what a perfect opportunity that I had to get some hands-on fiberglass work. And so really, I'm no expert. I'm trying to learn the flow. And so people were saying, oh, you need more, you need more footage of slow-mo footage of you doing the work. Well, part of the problem is I'm still trying to work on my workflow. A lot of times I don't know what I'm doing and I set the camera up and then I'm like, oh wait, I forgot to do this. And the camera's running and it runs out of battery. And then, <laughs> or, or worse off, I set it up and then I've got my gloves on and I'm already knee deep in resin because when I work, I make a mess. And, and then I forgot, oh wait, I forgot to turn the camera on and I can't because I got my gloves on and I'm covered with resin. Or the wind blows the camera over. So I, I'm still working on that. And so th there'll be a lot more videos of showing me doing that as I figure out my workflow and get my workflow down. So right now, my work schedule is crazy for my full-time job, but I'm really gonna work to try to get a video out every week for you guys because you guys keep asking for it because I'm addicted to those comments. It really makes me excited to, to see all those great comments from you guys down below. So if you got some value out of these videos, please like them. Uh, and then also, please leave me some comments because like I say, it, it just makes my day to read those comments and um, all the great support from you guys. So thanks a lot and we'll see you next time.